Okay, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to set up port forwarding so that you can host a website on your virtual machine behind your Endian Firewall router virtual machine right here. So what you need in this exercise we have two virtual machines on our computer and we have an internet connection on a wireless router and the Endian Firewall has two NICs, one in bridge mode facing the wireless router and the other one on a LAN segment mode facing the internal network. And the goal of this um, lesson is to show how to do port forwarding on your Endian Firewall so that you can host websites on a web server behind your Endian Firewall. Okay, so to do this, you have to have this set up already. And you can see here, I've got my Endian Firewall here. And it's connected. Um, it's ready to go. You can see I've got a console interface to it here, right? But it's on. And... I'll minimize that and it has picked up an IP address from my wireless router at 192.168.3.111 when you build this virtual machine you have to build it with two NICs and you'll see here that I have on this Endian firewall removable devices two network adapters right two NICs NIC 1 is in LAN segment mode we'll take a look at this the first NIC is in uh, LAN segment mode and I created a LAN segment, a VLAN for it, called Endian-Network. And this NIC right here, this network adapter, the first one, is this NIC right here in the graphic and it's pointing towards the private internal network. And this NIC over here is network adapter 2 and it's in bridged mode. And in bridged mode it will pick up an IP address just like my laptop that I'm working from right now picks up an IP address from the wireless router on the network and it has picked up the IP address 192.168.3.111 so this router has two interfaces one outside facing and one inside facing and the inside facing one has this IP address 192.168.0.15 which is the management interface used to manage the Indian firewall now to manage it you need to have a second client and so we have set up a second VM on the network at 192.168.0.253 okay I've given it a static IP address for this lesson because we're going to set up a web server on it and web servers need to have static IP addresses so let's take a look at that client too so I'll close this window that's our VM for our Indian firewall okay and we'll look at our other VM here's the other VM and you can see I've already showing that I have a connection here to my Indian firewall through a web browser now this Windows 7 VM, removable devices, network adapter, has one NIC and it also needs to be on the LAN segment so that it can talk to the Endian network, to the Endian firewall on 192.168.0 on network, right? So we got that set up. And I changed, for this lesson, I changed the IP address of the NIC. We'll go here and show it to you. I changed the settings of the adapter from DHCP, which we were doing in the previous exercise, to a static IP address because now I'm going to make it a web server. And a web server, servers need to have static IP addresses that never change. So you can see here's the settings I gave it. 192.168.0.253 and the gateway is the Indian firewall at 0.15 and I also made the Indian firewall the DNS server also at 192.168.0.15 so I'll click OK close it close it and that's this local area connection right here in my network connections in the network and internet settings right so I'll close that and now so we're connected right we have a connection and we need to set up a web server on this Windows 7 VM for that, what you're going to want to do is go to wampserver.com. This is www.wampserver.com. And you're going to want to download, basically, WAMP Server, which is an Apache MySQL PHP distribution that's easy to install. So you just scroll down, and I'm going to install it here. I'm going to install this one, WAMP Server 64-bit, the first option right here for Windows. So if you click on it, it opens up a pop-up window warning you that you're, forced, you're first going to need to download and install, if you don't have it, the Visual C++ libraries, either 64-bit or 32-bit. 
So I'm running a 64-bit version of Windows 7 here. So I went to this website and I already downloaded it. It takes you right straight to the download center at Microsoft and you can just press download and download these C++ libraries, right? It's an executable file, so you'll download that. Once you're done downloading your C++ libraries, you will also need, let's go back to that website, you're also going to need to download the WAMP server program. So we'll go back down there and select it, and then you can do that by clicking here, this link right here. Download it directly, okay? And you click here and it'll open up another window, take you to SourceForge, and you download the WAMP server. All right, so I've already done that, so let's go to our Downloads folder. And you can see in the Downloads folder, I've got, there it is, this is the C++ libraries, and I've already installed them, I've already ran this program. So now all I have to do is install the WAMP server program right here. Okay, so I'm going to run the installer. I'm going to right click on this WAMP server installer and run it as an administrator. I'll hit yes and walk through the installation process, accept the agreement, and just quickly install it. I'll add some icons to the desktop and run the install. Okay, the install looks like it's complete. All I have to do is accept the default in this scenario which is pointing to Internet Explorer, essentially. All right, I'll accept the default and click Finish. I'll close my Downloads folder here. Close this window. And you can see that now WAMP Server is running right here down in my system tray. If I click on it, you can see that I can restart all the services, which is Apache, MySQL, PHP. I can restart all the services. You can see now it goes to green. I can also click on this icon and select Put Online, which will put the server online. All right, there it goes. So now I'm set to go. I also have a Start button right here, or a shortcut right here to start up the WAMP server, but I've got my Apache web server running. Now, we'll just test it out. We'll go back to our Internet Explorer browser and We'll see if we can get to it from a new tab. We'll put in localhost. And you can see there is the WAMP server splash screen, right? The home page showing you that the server's been installed. And here's the basic server configuration informational page on a fresh install. OK, so I have WAMP server running. So I've got a web server running. I can reach it from this Windows 7 machine. Now what I need to do is I need to go into my Endian firewall, and I need to set up my settings to set up port forwarding so people from outside of this virtual network can reach the web server. All right, so first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go to network, and I'm going to go to, and I'm going to add my host to the network. So my IP address here is 192.168.0.253. And the host name, I'm going to put the PC's name here. The name of the PC is, we'll go here, the computer name is test user dash PC. So that's what I'll put in here. Test user dash PC. All right, and I'll add that host. Now, I didn't need to do that, but I just like to do it to know what hosts are on my network with static IP address assignments. Now, for the port forwarding, I'm going to go to Firewall, and I'm going to, there's some choices here, right? Port forwarding, destination NAT, it's the first choice, and I'm going to add a rule. So I'll add a new port forwarding rule, and the incoming IP address, I'm going to set it to be from the main uplink, which is my red zone, my public WAN facing link, or you could choose any uplink, but I'm going to use uplink main, which will be from my outside address to if people are contacting us on HTTP service port 80 so that's your web service right there then what we're gonna do is so if somebody contacts us from the outside on port 80 HTTP we're gonna translate it to an IP address 192.168.0.253 we're gonna send it to 0.253 on port 80 
we'll nat it and all right and filter policy source type we can allow with IPS that's fine we can just leave that enabled is check marked we can put a remark in here we could say forward to web server 80 right port 80 forward to web server all right that's fine and we'll just hit create rule and you can see there's our rule from incoming IP address from the red zone the uplink main on port 80 we're going to translate it to 0 0.253 on port 80 I've got my, rem my remark here which says forward to web server I'll click apply and so now the rule has been applied so now we have a port forwarding rule and if the Indian firewall is contacted on the outside interface right on the red interface right our main uplink then it should forward traffic to our web server right and so if the Indian firewall is contacted on the outside it should forward traffic over to our web server over here let's try it out so what we'll do is I'm gonna minimize my virtual machines here right and so now I'm just working with my Windows 7 laptop and I'll open up a browser here, I'll open up a new tab, and I'll try to go to the Indian firewall. 192.168.3.111. And I'll hit enter, and you can see I pick up the web the web page from the web server behind the Indian firewall. So this is what the Indian firewall returned, right? It obviously forwarded the request to the web server and the web server returned the request and it went through the firewall and then back to me. So it worked. There's your port forwarding. Just to prove it, we can go to our Windows 7 VM and we can go down into our system tray to our WAMP server. And we can change our web page. Right? I can change this web page. So what I could do is make sure that I have my extensions off hide extensions for known file types, uncheck that and I'll create a new document, new text document called index.html of course I don't want it to have the .txt extension on the end so now I have an index.html page I'll alter my index.php page so it no longer works Okay and now I can just edit this page with notepad let's see here um, I want to open this with notepad, hold on okay and I'll just type in hello and put save and so now I've altered this index.html page just typed in the word hello and I backed up my index.php page and this is the WAMP www folder inside the C drive and so now if I go back to my browser out here and hit refresh you can see that it shows the new web page so the Indian firewall device is successfully forwarding data, right? And it worked. So that's nice.